Look, no politics, no rants, just a fun history of Thanksgiving, and then we all go home. Slam synopsis. September 1620, plenty of pilgrims pursued a pilgrimage with courage for religious freedom, the Mayflower Freedom carrying 102 bodies, but their first winter there was not hoty, obviously, with living conditions pretty shoddy. A lot just chilled on the boats, literally, hit really hard with dismally dilapidating diseases. Jesus, though, those who made it through would step to the new world and be greeted by a... Native American, can you help us? And Abenaki would not attack you then, but introduced himself in English as Samo said, and you could bet he'd be back with a man from another region, not Kanto. This Patuxa was named Squanto, and although he was captured by a seafaring sea captain, not fair by enslaving and depraving, and not caving and escaping the Cape and scraped to London, donning a new transition and returning on an expedition, he would still help them. Squanto did know a lot about the Grand Land and would stand to teach them how to cultivate corn, disseminate maple, and differentiate poison, ensuring the boys and girls were learning how to survive in the live. Also, Squanto did not squander relations and turned a better cog between the settlers and Wampanoag tribe in what can only be described and described as one of the few piecemeal peaceful relations between immigrants and natives. So November 1621, the corn harvest was done, fewer sufferers, so Governor William Bradford opened his pad for his gals and guys, some native allies, and the Womp Chief Masses. So it goes, this was the first American Thanksgiving. I do not jest, it lasted for three days like a music fest, headlined by five deer and some fowls. According to some guy's journal, again, there were corn kernels and native dishes with wishes for dessert, but had to dessert because they hurt their stockpile storing succulent supplies like sugar. In 22, due to a drought, the second feast was touted as a religious fast in Thanksgiving since food was sparse, but most saw it not as a farce and got off their arse to spread the new tradition with no petitions. Now, with your permission, I'll jump ahead. Time transition! So, in addition, in 1789, George Washington fed the line to have a national day of Thanksgiving, but this was more impromptu than annual. On to manual, where each state got control. NY rolled out first in 1817, but not everyone would convene to eat cuisine with their mouth. The South was late to the party, while other states started their own annual day for years. But have no fear, because Sarah Joseph Hale is, well, was here. So Sarah Joseph was a hailstorm of many talents, finding balance between being an educated madam and writing Mary Had a Little Lamb. Damn, Uncle Sam said the American have a day to say thanks. Giving in, Lincoln was thinking a date should sink in and declared in 1863 the final Thursday would be a day to commend to his tender care all those who did not fare well in the Civil War. They fought for things like to say slaves should be freed. Now we only have Civil War on Blu-ray or your newsfeed. Thank you. In 1939, FDR went to FD Far when he moved the holiday up a week to spur retail sales during the Great Sad Period. To a myriad, it was a crime because people were pissed at the plot twist and in the midst of pulling his wrist got what they wanted in 41 when he was done and said, no more, okay, we'll move it on the fourth Thursday. The idea of a Thanksgiving feast isn't new now and wasn't then when Romans, Egyptians, and Greeks would seek ways to offer thanks to their gods. Uh, also, some draw parallels to Judaism. Don't cause a schism. I don't care. We're not going to get grisly. It comes from the feast during the time of Tishri. Let any objections just kick the bucket. If you don't like it, you can... Suck it. I hope that joke was worth it. Now scholars will holler at each other and bother to discern what was the true first Thanksgiving, giving thought to 1565. In St. Augustine, Florida, a foreigner came and natives welcomed him to their home. Ayo hey befriended a castaway, Pedro Menendez de Avilay, ate with some tamakwa to chew on some food after mass to offer thanks to God for his crusade for rival, while on December 4th, 1619, 38 settlers settled into Berkeley 100 and hunted on the banks of James River in Virginia, they'd sing you their proclamation as a day of thanksgiving to Almighty God. So where are we today? Let's say 90% of those who own homes or pay rent eat turkey. Do I seem perky? It's just quirky that that stat came from the National Turkey Federation. We have one. There is no psych. John Reichs is chairman, so people do care when the president pardons. In some garden, he or she, no, just he, saves a turkey from harm to go retire on a farm. I hope they have a 401k, subtract 396, and people will fix on high kicks in a 5k, or donate their time and food to those who are less fortunate. I'm just pouring it on but it is nice to do something emotionally deep i just don't donate because your boy needs sleep relax this is all a charade besides i'm up to watch the macy's parade in 24 the store did not ignore this core from our days of yore fans outdoors adore the passing floats and the gloats of the webs of celebs two to three million spectators flock while commentators talk and lightly mock the walk that's two and a half miles long but what's wrong is the genius lip syncing because singing when it's freezing is displeasing to the vocal cords even if you're local it's vocal you stay warm over the manholes unless you're from the north pole like santa who's coming to town late because we start decorating already 
When you're done with that, we got the National Dog Show sponsored by Purina. The arena has crowded canines, cute, fluffy, and burly. It's kept John O'Hurley's career alive. Then watch the drives from the Cowboys, Elliot and Dak. I hope they get smacked. Or Stafford's lions lying down from serotonin or lying to your fam who are moaning about your life. To avoid the strife, just look down at your knife and ignore the conversations rife with politics, racism, or millennial mayhem. Just tell them to try a more grateful angle and just be thankful. Raise your glass, sip that red wine, and let's just chat about the Dakota Access Pie. Hey, no politics. Run it back. Raise a glass, sip that Sauvignon, and let's just all watch the James Bond Marathon. Now, not everyone is happy. Protesters gather at Coles Hill to get their fill of scorning with a national day of mourning because most Native Americans had a burned down village. But I have white privilege, so I don't shed that tear. So instead, I'll protest why Black Friday is here all day because the fun of Friday is fleeting, feeling the frenzy of floods of freakishly finicky shoppers who are hoppers from one shop to the next should annex because perplex why it's so complex one would wake up early. But surely that doesn't matter because stores open at 9 p.m. when we're on the road again because now we also take our Thursdays black. Like my man. Hopefully your fam is the peak and perk of someone who can actually cook like the Food Network so you can enjoy your feast eating a greased piece like a chicken and a duck and a turkey called a turducken. What the fuck? And people actually eat that? There's a lot to be thankful and a lot to be ungrateful. But let's use this time to be kind and not be hateful. May you find solace in your lives and meaning and reason. Happy Thanksgiving. And now... It's... Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, hell. The? Get the hell out of there! I'm shit! No! Christmas season! Oh, copyright, copyright. Better. Fuck this shit.